Hey, it's Coral, and today we are going to be talking about gender identity. I think it's a really important topic, and I really don't have a horse in this race because I do identify as a cis woman, but I have seen a lot of channels talking about it, and so I guess I wanted to put my two cents out there because I do think it's a, a very, very important topic. I also want to say thank you to all of the big channels that are discussing it in the various ways, whether it be the non sequitur, um, Mr. Atheist, even um, I saw Noel Plum, uh, and I'm sure I butchered that name and I apologize. I saw something on it uh, on Luxander's channel and Godless Iowan, and there's so many more. And I think it is something that is definitely um, in the mind's eye. That can be shown, for example, on SNL. Sorry, it's my dog, Arma. She just wanted to say hi. Um, on SNL, John... Don Cheadle had um, a shirt that got attention, but, and I'm really happy that he did. He was able to use the privilege that he has by having a platform to discuss these issues. In October 2018, the, oh, and I'm going to get this wrong, so I'm going to pull up my article that I wrote on this earlier today because I don't want to get the study wrong. There was a study done by the American Academy of Pediatrics and, excuse me, they published it, and it is called Transgender Adolescent Suicide Behavior. And these are the facts that I found, well, sad and not shocking, but um, it might be for some. Here, it says 51% of transgender male adolescents reported at least one suicide attempt. That was the highest rate in the study. The second highest was among young people who are non-binary, those who do not identify exclusively as male or female, at 42%. And while 30% of transgender female adolescents reported attempted suicide. So those numbers are insanity. And I, in the basis of all of these things, the big thing that, that comes up time and time again is uh, what is it that people are talking about? Whether or not it's a mental illness whether or not they, what pronouns to use, and whether or not it's asking too much, or whether, I don't know. It's, there's so many conversations that need to be had on it, but my favorite conversation was done by Noel Plum, and I will link his videos. He has two of them this week that he posted on, and I think it really goes down to the meat of it. And as a cis woman, I am trying to use my privilege that I have to provide my perspective, my point of view of why I think it's important. And I love the fact that him, as a uh, cis male, he's doing the same, and he's able to have hard conversations about controversial topics such as this, about whether or not uh, word usage is important and why it's important to, or whether or not it's important to use something different for biological sex versus gender identity. Um, and then... Um, I also think it's it's also really important too because okay so story time and I apologize I'm about to ramble but when I was younger 
I was a tomboy. I loved doing things that were typically boys, like I was one of the first ones that wanted to go climb trees. I played baseball, football, basketball, ran track. I, um, I hung out with mostly boys because I just didn't understand girls and the things that they were into. Um, I just, that, that cattiness that happens a lot with females, I didn't really... I don't know. I didn't identify with them, but I still identified as a girl. I was a tomboy and I was proud of being a tomboy, but I always um, was very big on saying, no, I'm a girl. If I was misgendered and that did happen a lot because I cut my hair off and did a boy cut and we're not talking about just a pixie cut. Like I did a like bold cut. It was terrible. It was awful. Um, and I wore, you know, jeans and a t-shirt. I didn't wear a lot of skirts and dresses. I was out catching frogs and insects. And I, I just did the things that I enjoyed doing. And I was, I was, definitely misgendered. And I would always, I would always correct them. And I know like that feeling that you get, like, really, do I really look like a boy that much? Like I, I, I I was confused. Why did this happen to me? Like, I mean, can't they tell I'm a girl? Like, I didn't think I looked like a boy. And, but I mean, it, to me, it was like, there, there was like a badge to be proud of being a girl and a badass girl at that, you know, that's why I, I joined the military and, um, why I, uh, chose a male dominated rate while I was in the military being a badass chick I was okay with and I wanted to prove not only that I could do it as a female but that I could um well we have a we have a saying um that we women have to work twice as hard to be thought of half as well and whether there's truth to that statement or not it definitely affected how I proceeded and why I pushed so hard to learn about weaponry and um, the engine room when I was working down in the engine room. And I wanted to be seen as not just a, a woman, but to be acknowledged as being a hard worker. I wanted to be acknowledged that I could do the same jobs as all the guys out there or better. <laughs> that was important too. I'm not going to lie. So I think that I, I have a lot of understanding of how those feels, but my understanding is so little so tiny compared to what non-binary people or transgender people go through every day. I mean, honestly, the, they have to deal with so much frustration and anger and bigotry and just straight up hate. Like, seriously, it is amazing the brave people that decide to come out and be the people uh, that they know they are inside or maybe they don't know inside maybe it's just they're seeking out who they are if it's something that's not in the box that's so brave and it takes so much courage because they get so much like 
kickback about that. I, I think that's one of the main reasons why I do make sure that in my stories as a writer, I make sure that I include transgender and non-binary type uh, characters because they exist. They exist in our world and they are just as unique as you and me. Whether or not they identify as male or female or somewhere on the beautiful spectrum of gender, it doesn't matter because in the end, we're just human. That's it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I want to put ideas and suggestions and uh, conversations out in the world to let people know that are marginalized and things like that and let them know, yes, you exist. I will not erase who you are. You are worthy of life. You are beautiful. And I know that you have struggles and that your struggles are real. And it matters. So I guess that's, that's all I really wanted to say. I will link um, my full article where I talk a little bit more about some of my background. Um, but mostly... I have a special note as well to um, the people that identify as transgender and non-binary if you want to to read that. It's a little bit more of uh, what I just said. And I want to say to you guys, please do not hesitate to get out there and join the conversation. We need to talk about these these topics, um, we need to normalize the people that are unique in our society because as humans, one of the most beautiful thing about being human is the fact that we are so diverse with unique stories and perspectives and ideas. That's why I that's why I joined the conversation, so I hope you will too. All right, guys and gals and everyone, I appreciate you, and I hope that you all have a great day. Bye.